Hello, and uh, welcome to week seven, the first video of three. Um, so we're going to start talking about lighting in Vectorworks 2020 um, and what that means for our event spaces. An important thing to note is that pretty much everything we're going to be using here are either in the tool sets um, or in the um, uh, or in the resource uh, manager. So those are two things that are going to be really critical for us um, to be using throughout this process. So the first thing we're going to do um, is look at lighting positions. So maybe we want um, some sort of uh, lighting position pipe or truss in our space. So we're going to go over to the little uh, the tool sets, which I keep in the bottom left, but it could be wherever you have your tool sets window. And in the spotlight menu, there should be a um, lighting pipe tool. Okay, so there's lighting ladder, lighter pipe, uh, ladder lighting pipe, and you can use this just like a line tool. Right? Click and drag, and it will create a lighting position. Now, a lot of these have to do with um, a lot of these options have to do with you know line type. Do you want it to be a double line like a like a pipe would be have that has a little bit of width? Um, is it just a single um, line with a weight associated with it? Um, when it renders, when you put it in 3D, will it be round, square, hexagon? Um, this is construction material. I don't usually worry too much about that. Um, and then also you can add tick marks. So you can do tick marks or loci snaps um, on 18 inch centers is what I do. Um, and then you can set it on um, where it's centered on, on uh, origin or splitting center. So like if you had a pipe where you wanted a light that was at directly center, you might want to set your centers on center or you might want to split center where it's um, going to be nine inches off each direction so that if you have two lights that you want to have sort of be your center light but offset, um, you can split center. Um, you know, most of these don't really affect how this works, but you can also... Um, give a name to it, um, talk about location, that sort of thing. Um, I don't usually do a ton of that type of stuff, um, but there you go. So then you create a lighting position. And again, if you do the single line weight, the single line you may want to associate it with a bit of a heftier weight just so that um, it stands out a bit more um, in your drawing. Um, remember that you also, um, can gray out things like so these seats we probably want to gray out in our classes and stuff when if we're doing a lighting position over it for clarity i'm going to just work pretty close to the stage here so with a lighting pipe um the nice thing is it has these little tick marks um and that's so this is an option i'm going to put this actually oops, i did not mean to grab that um, i'm going to put my lighting pipe for the back of my stage here just to have something there. So over in the tool set window, we have straight truss, which we can click on. And you do the same thing with, with curved truss. I'm gonna make it an even 40 feet. Um, and the same thing, you can give a name to it. Um, type of truss, connection interval, height, width, um, all that sort of stuff, um, and hit OK. And now we have a lighting truss. which we can hang multiple fixtures on if we if we so desire. Now, the nice thing is um, these also can go into 3D. And the way that these do go into 3D is you can just highlight them and then adjust the Z axis in the object info palette, right? So if I put this at 30 feet and I put this truss at 30, let's say this is at 35 feet, and then I use the flyover tool, these are now in the air above my stage. Now you can do that with individual lighting instruments as well. When we, we're going to look at lighting instruments in just a moment, um, you can do that with lighting instruments as well. However, um, if you connect a lighting instrument to a lighting uh, pipe or truss, um, it'll automatically take the Z axis of whatever um, it's attached to. So we'll look at that when we look at um, lighting instruments, which I guess is is right now. So pretty much you can use these for as many positions as you feel you need for your space. So I'm going to open up the resource manager, which we've spent a lot of time in um, the last few uh, weeks. And in the resource manager, I'm going to go into the Vectorworks libraries. And then I'm going to go into entertainment 
lighting instruments. Now, what I recommend you do, um, because you have all these lights that you can pick from, is I'm going to suggest that you, um, for those of you who aren't lighting folks, to stick with the ETC Source 4 folder. And I would suggest you use either the Source 4 series lights or the Source 4 PAR lights. Um, these would be the two that I would suggest you use. Um, and if you're using the PARs, use these ones, not these ones. Um, but I'm going to use the Source 4 just regular um, lights for a moment here and I'm going to make I'm going to use a 36 degree which is a fairly standard light and we'll talk about what all the different degrees mean as a refresher but the great thing about it is notice how all I needed to do is I say oh I want a 36 degree I just click that and then X on my resource manager and now on my trust I just hit where I want it to go and hit where I want it to go and then I can use the next step to choose where to point it um, on the 2D plan. So on the 2D plan, pretty much all of my lights are either facing like this or like this. I rarely have lights that are 45 or I pr try to do pretty much just nice right angles. It just looks a little bit cleaner on the plan. Uh, this is not focusing the light where it's going to point when we do renderings. We'll talk about that next week. Um, but anyway, I've just created a source for 36 degree on a lighting pipe, on a truss. And it automatically, because it knows it's attached to the truss, it automatically hangs from the truss. And when I do OpenGL, there it is. So now we have a light hanging on a pipe. We haven't pointed it anywhere yet. That's that's another another day's work, but we have it on a truss. Um, now, I'm actually going to reevaluate where I have this truss. The best place, I'm going to say for this purposes of this project, you want to have something that's about 45 degrees from the, a six-foot person standing on stage. So if I have, I'm going to actually put this into um, from the right side. So if I have a six-foot tall person on stage, I'm just making a six-foot tall line. And then... I'm going to take this angle and I'm just going to do a 45 degree um, angle, which will tell me my, it's 30 degrees, 45. So that's where I want my 45 degree angle to come from the stage. And this is approximate that I'm doing here. I'm just, I'm just going to move this to, uh, to here. So I just did a quick calculation, about six feet from about where I have people standing to, um, that's a little bit less, but that's sort of what we're looking for. When we look at um, uh, rendering in the next week, we'll get more specific with this, which is just to give you an idea of where you maybe might want to think about putting some trusses um, with some lights. So now I have that in, um, and I just deleted those lines. I didn't keep them for any reason. Um, so now I have a nice, a nice truss up in the air. Um, with a single light on it. Um, let's see, what else do we want to talk about? So really with this, there's there's two main types of lights that I would say we want to worry about for this particular project. Um, profile lights, which are the ETC Source 4 fixtures. Um, and just in case you're not familiar with how lighting instruments work, um, the degrees on these refer to the size of the light coming out of the, the, um, the um, instrument. So 36 degree is a little bit wider than a 26 degree, which is wider than a 19 degree, right? So the, the narrowest degree on here is five degree. That's for like really long throws. Um, and the catch is the bigger it gets, the darker it gets, because it's the same amount of light coming out of the lamp. It's just a matter of how it gets distributed. Um, so we'll talk about in the next week, uh, picking uh, which light you actually want to do for the job and deciding whether or not it's bright enough um, and all of that. But that is uh, for another um, another day. Um, but also uh, the other type, which I talked about, was the ETC PARs. They have a similar thing to degrees. Now, these you can't do gobos and you can't do shutter cuts with, um, but they're a lot brighter. Um, and these are not done by degree, but by uh, this is narrow spot very narrow, medium, wide, and extra wide. 
Um, so those are, you know, your different options for, for that. So they don't measure it in degrees, but we'll, we'll look at those um, next week um, in terms of picking lights for your event space and all of that. So um, for the light itself, we also have the ability to uh, modify certain things about the light. And we'll look at this more in depth um, over the next couple of weeks because we're going to be looking at light, right, and paperwork and how that all works. Um, and also um, focusing the lights where we want to on stage. So this week, we're just getting a couple lights in the space and playing around with the tools. Um, but in here, you'll see all the information around what type of, um, you know, the type of information we have here. And that's what we're going to talk about in the next video.